Dear Church, let us close in prayer. God, we want to thank you for seeing us through another week. Lord, as we come before you, Lord, for this uh, afternoon's worship, we ask the Lord uh, that you will speak to us. We pray that God, that you prepare our hearts and that we will come before you, O Lord, with an attitude to seek, with an attitude, O God, to hear. So I pray, O God, that you take away every burden, every uh, uh, that is uh, weighing on our shoulder and we want to place it right at the feet of the cross. So we commit ourselves to you. And we also want to take this time to pray for the church. Lord, uh, we are still in the COVID-19 situation. Lord, where we are not able to come together to meet in a physical uh, location to see one another face to face. So God, we want to pray that we will not uh, sleep into lethargy and fatigue. But we pray that God, that even though despite Lord, the current situation we are facing, we will continue to rise up a lot and all the more be stronger in you a lot. And that, and that the church will continue to uh, uh, display a greater spirit a lot of unity. And uh, finally, we also want to pray uh, for this uh, general conference that's coming up in the, on the 3rd and 4th December. We want to just, uh, first of all, thank you for a new president, uh, uh, Bishop-elect, that is uh, the Reverend Dr. Gordon Wong, to oversee the church uh, work over the next four years. And we want to pray for this upcoming conference that you will see them through. We pray for a smooth completion of the conference. So we want to thank you once again uh, for listening to our prayer and all this, oh God, we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Okay, welcome church. Welcome to this uh, week's uh, hour of uh, transformation. Uh, I hope it has been a good week for everyone. So we, we, as we come together, we let's prepare our hearts. And I want to lead all of us uh, in this call to worship. And uh, this week's call to worship is taken from Psalms chapter 80, verses 1 to 7 and 17 to 19. And I will read in the text in black and you will respond to the text in uh, uh, brown. Okay. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, awaken your might, come and save us. Restore us, O God, make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us an object of derision to our neighbours, and our enemies mock us. Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Okay, I'll pass the time to Derek, who will lead us in the time of celebration in praise. Hello, everyone. Welcome back again to another Sunday worship service. Indeed, it's good to be back to sing praises with all of you. So let us start with our first song, Hosanna, Praise is Rising. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Indeed, hear the sound of hearts. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. 
we turn to you and in your kingdom Lord in your kingdom broken lives are being new you made all this new cause when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence and in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Cause when we see you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Wash away Hosanna Hosanna You are the God who saves us Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna. Come have your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hosanna 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 One more last time Hosanna Has spoken, 
I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. That has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living Sing it once more time. And came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the Yours is the victory, and hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living. Hallelujah! And hallelujah! Praise the one who sets me free! Hallelujah! Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. As Jesus God, you are my living All I have of worth, I break it at your feet. The whole is less than you deserve. You're far more beautiful, more precious than the oil. The sum of my desires and the fullness of my joy. Like you who spilled your blood. I spill my heart as an offering to my King. Here I am, take me as an
This time that I have left is all I have of worth. I lay it at your feet, Lord, it's less than you deserve. And though I've little strength, and though my days are few, you gave your life for me, so I will live my life for you. Like you spilled your blood, I spilled my heart as an offering to my King. Here I am, thank you, as an offering. Oh, here I am, giving every heart for your glory take me for you are worthy worthy is the lord you are worthy worthy Let us pray. Yes, Lord, Heavenly Father, our gracious and loving God, you are worthy of all our praises. We thank you and worship you. We want to proclaim the mighty works of your hands and the awesome deeds for mankind. For you are a great God, the God who saved us. Today, as we enter the season of event, this season of longing and waiting, we are reminded to stay awake for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we wait upon the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray that, Lord, in this time of preparations, we look not just a memory of past events, but, Lord, we pray that you teach us, show us, and help us the body of Christ, and spur one another so that we joyfully respond and commit ourselves to living in a manner worthy of your love. So Lord, we pray that you restore us, you bring us back to that place where we once met as shepherds to the stable after hearing the angels sing. Bring us back to that place when, we, when our love was fresh, not embarrassed to express it with praise to our heavenly kingdom, heavenly king. So Lord, restore us, we pray. And so this afternoon, to you, Lord, we bring our lives where the trouble, broken, or at ease to be a sacrificial offering to you, Lord, for you to use. Take away our selfishness and teach us to love as you love. Take away 
our sense of pride and show us the meaning of humility. Take away our blindness and show us the world through your eyes and take away our greed and teach us how to give as you gave. Show us your way and teach us your paths that we might walk with you more closely. Take us out of our comfort zone to show us new things, to stretch us, to help us grow in Christ-likeness to the praise of your glory until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our living hope. God with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Patrick. Once again, welcome everybody to this uh, week's uh, service. Uh, it's really nice to see everyone gather here in this platform. Okay, we want to welcome uh, uh, okay, everyone, especially for those who join us for the first time. Can we just unshare the screen and uh, let everybody see everybody? So if you are just uh, displaying your name, we want to see your face. Hello. Yeah, that's always a difference between seeing the face behind the name and the name behind the face, right? So we're glad to see, okay, that we can uh, come together once again. Okay, I'd like to bring you some uh, news from uh, the general conference. Okay, come next January, we will have a new bishop for the Methodist Church of Singapore who will be taking over our current bishop, Reverend Dr. Chong, who has served as a bishop for the past four years. We want to thank him for his faithful service and wishes him all the best for his future ministries. And he will be taken over by, uh, and he will be succeeded by Reverend Dr. Gordon Wong, who will be our new bishop. Okay, we also want to announce that our current CAC president, Reverend Dr. Go, he will continue his work as the president for another term, and he will be assisted by the newly elected vice president, Mr. Guan Yao Kuang. So as members of the CAC, as a Methodist church, let us uh, remember okay, who is the bishop and who is the CAC president. And uh, next week, we will be having our Holy Communion service. So do take note, it is on a Saturday, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Okay, and uh, for those who have, uh, okay, I'm about to announce that uh, for those who want to register, uh, please do so with the QR code and or the tiny URL. But uh, unfortunately, the registration is already closed. But you are free to walk in. Okay, you are free to just walk in. And uh, I'm sure we have enough uh, vacancy for those of you who walk in. So join us for next week's uh, Holy Communion Service at GLCC on site 2 p.m. Okay, we want to see you there. And uh, go moving on. Uh, Pastor has already made the announcement for this for the past two weeks about this uh, youth conference that will be taking place on the 10th of December. So we are not going to go into detail, but we will post this uh, information, this announcement on the chat so that you have more time to look at it and go through it. And uh, the next one is also what Pastor has announced the previous week on finding your place. This is really catered for those who have a gap year where you have time to uh, take on a course to understand and dive more deeply into those uh, topics at least listed uh, over there. Uh, also, we will not go in too much uh, and we will just post this same thing into the chat group so that if you are interested, you can find out, you want to find out more, please uh, inform the church office. And uh, one thing to note is this is free for CAC members and allowance will be provided. All right, this is a golden opportunity. So if you have the time, do make time. For this uh, to, to go on this uh, learning experience. And for this uh, end of the year, we will be uh, holding a baptism confirmation service on the 26th of December. And uh, we and we will do it uh, in a part as a one in a, under one of our usual service. This so this is the additional on top of uh, what has been announced previously that uh, November, we're gonna have one live service, December, we're gonna have one. So this is actually the 
additional one before come January, we're going to go full force uh, on-site service uh, on a Saturday. So this, uh, we will be holding our baptism and confirmation service. So for those who wish to get baptized or confirmed, please uh, contact June, uh, our church office, for the application form. And there'll be classes to be conducted on the 17th and 18th December. Next. Okay, we want to uh, show this table because uh, we have uh, received some feedback, some questions uh, regarding uh, you know, when are we going to meet on a Saturday? Is this a week, coming week, uh, going to be on a, a live service? So it's getting a little bit confusing. We understand and we thank you for your understanding. Okay, so this table here, okay, I think you have already, uh, we have already posted on the chat. This will uh, refer back to this just in case you cannot remember which uh, are we doing on a Saturday or on the Sunday, refer back to this. So next week, uh, as announced, we will be holding on a Saturday live for our Holy Communion service. The following two weeks will be online as usual as what we are doing now. And then 26, we are going, we are going back to a GLCC again for the baptism and confirmation service. Okay, so uh, refer back to this uh, that is posted on the chat group. And moving on. Okay, to, for the month of December, we will not be uh, having any uh, children ministry. Okay, we'll be taking a break. And uh, in fact, today is the very last day of the children ministry classes where they are celebrating, where, where they are bidding farewell to those uh, P6 uh, students. Two, one of them is Sean and the other one is uh, Gabriel. In fact, if you look at your screen right now, you can see here, uh, uh, some some uh, places, it seems like a bit overcrowded, but you come on, uh, they are still within five people, don't worry. Huh? <laughs> so, okay, so, so, uh, so come January, everything will resume back. Okay, and now uh, moving on, next week, the duty personnel, chairperson will be, uh, sorry, not next week, huh? it's on the 13th of December, the chairperson will be uh, Dennis, Lecter, Eleanor, AV will be Claire, we want to thank them for the service. Okay, let's now prepare our hearts for the tithes and offering. Okay, as usual, the method of our giving will be through this, uh, what is shown on the screen. So I guess we don't have to go deep. So let's take out our phone.
Okay, I want to invite all of us to just rise for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. Today's scripture text is uh, taken from John chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 17. I'll hand the time over to Jonah, who will lead us in this scripture reading. John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he, fi when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon, church. For today's uh, service, we are blessed to have with us Dr. Liao Ting Huat to be our speaker. Uh, Dr. Liao is a lecturer at Trinity and he teaches theology. He is a father of three, husband of one, and I think some of us have met him also. He was our church camp speaker in 2018. So uh, today I invite you to open your hearts to hear God's word and uh, allow the Lord to speak to you. Dr. Liao, please. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Simon, for that kind introduction. Um, thank you once again for inviting me to preach here. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the last time I was at Changi Methodist was actually in December last year. And it's a great privilege for me to be back here again. Although in vastly different circumstances. Okay. Uh, I hope that all of you have been well. Uh, you know, it's really challenging to try to have a service, to try to have the life of the church, you know, in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, we pray that somehow God will make a way for us uh, to come back together again physically uh, and to have fellowship with one another. So we just ask God for his help. As we look into his word today, may God truly bless us with his strength, with his power, with his presence amongst us today. 
Please join me as we go to God in prayer. Let's pray together. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we do pray, Lord, that you please guide us this afternoon by your Word and your Holy Spirit, that in your light, Lord, we will see light. In your truth, find freedom. And in your will, your perfect will, we will discover your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask and pray all these in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I will be preaching uh, from John chapter 13, as has been read for us earlier. Uh, please allow me to share the slides that I prepared for this sermon. The title of my sermon uh, today is uh, Shock and Awe. Okay, uh, what do I mean by this? Of course, uh, I'm sure many of us have heard this phrase, shock and awe. And as far as my limited uh, research goes, it refers to a type of military strategy where the, the army tries to impose overwhelming force and firepower at the start of a conflict, you know, to overwhelm the enemy, to, to shock them, to destroy their morale, and so on. And as far as I know, uh, this term came to prominence when some American uh, generals used it to describe the start of their uh, military campaign in Iraq in the year 2003, you know. Uh, the U.S. Army uh, Armed Forces sh used shock and awe against the Iraqi troops under Saddam Hussein. Right? Uh, since then, uh, this term shock and awe has been used in totally different uh, contexts, non-military contexts. You know, even in the office, uh, we hear our co-workers saying, you know, when you start your presentation uh, to the Bob, to the big boss later, you must shock and awe them. Okay. So, so this phrase has truly uh, moved from the military context to many uh, different situations. I want to suggest uh, to us today that our passage from John chapter 13, uh, the passage of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, is truly a passage of shock and awe as well. Okay. Of course, not in the military sense, but in many other uh, senses. It is a passage of shock and awe when we look at it from the perspective of the Jewish culture in the first century AD, the time when Jesus uh, lived in, in, in Israel. If you look at it from this perspective, it was shock and awe. And it's also shock and awe when we look at it from the perspective of our relationship with God, in terms of our relationship with uh, God, our Heavenly Father, it is also a passage of shock and awe. And let me go through each of these in turn. From the perspective of the Jewish culture uh, of the first century, we know that back then, Food washing was a very common practice among the Jews. And this is so for good reason. Food washing normally would be the first act that a person would perform when he or she enters a home. The people of that time would wear sandals, uh, maybe something similar to the picture that we see in the slide. Uh, sandals that are open and of course after walking through uh, muddy, dusty and grimy streets uh, when you arrive at someone's home uh, it is hygienic and courteous uh, to wash your feet uh, as the first act when you, when you do so. It was also the practice of the Jews uh, during that time uh, to eat at a table, at a very low table 
where they would recline, you know, they won't sit on tables and chairs like we do. And because of that, uh, your feet could actually be touching someone else's clothes or even be quite near to someone else's face at the dinner table. So once again, it makes perfect sense uh, for, for, for the Jews to wash their feet when they enter a home. Feet washing was also an expected show of hospitality if you were the host. If you have invited guests to your home and when they step in, as the host, you are expected to provide uh, at least, at the very least, a basin of water for them to wash their own feet. Okay, Or if you were a rather rich man, you will even be expected to provide slaves uh, to wash the feet of your guests. Those were the show of hospitality that were expected of hosts during that time. And in the culture of the Jews in the first century, food washing was seen as a very demeaning act to be carried out only by a very selected group of people. Okay. So according to the teachings of the rabbis or the teachers, you cannot ask your Jewish slave to wash uh, your own feet or the feet of your guests. Okay, the Jews are seen as, you know, your, your fellow people. You cannot do that. But you can ask a Gentile slave, a slave who is non-Jew, to do this demeaning act. Another group of people that are allowed under the regulations to wash feet are uh, your wife and your children. Okay, you can wash uh, the husband's feet or the father's feet. Okay. Of course, this is in the context of the very uh, patriarchal society that was first century Israel. But in general, it is such a demeaning act that even Jewish slaves were not permitted to do uh, this act. When we look at uh, John chapter 13, we look at the evening meal that Jesus had with his disciples. And then we suddenly realized that something was wrong. Something went wrong during this meal because this common and accepted practice of food washing was apparently not carried out before the meal when they first stepped into the home. Why was this the case? One possibility is that uh, the disciples, you know, the, the 12 disciples that Jesus had with him may have seen themselves as the guests uh, to this meal, okay? And as the guests, uh, they were not obliged to, to provide the, the food washing equipment. They were looking at the host to provide it. But who is the host? It is not clear at all uh, from our passage. So if you read, that, read the gospel accounts, what happened was that Jesus actually asked the disciples to approach this man who would let them use their home, uh, uh, this upper room, uh, to have this uh, last supper, right? So who is the host, who is the guest is not clear. And I guess uh, to use a singlish term, the disciples probably act blur, blah, right? Uh, it's like, in our, in our offices, in our companies, uh, hey, by the way, who's in charge of this project? Uh? Don't know, don't know, don't know, don't care. Just act blur, okay? So they probably all act blur, uh, waiting for the others to take the initiative uh, uh, to, to provide the food washing uh, equipment. Another reason why uh, no one uh, did the food washing was, I think, because none of the disciples wanted to demean uh, themselves, himself, in front of the others in the, in the group. Right? Uh, even if you say, let me just prepare the basin and the water, I won't, of course, I won't wash um, my, my fellow disciples' feet, you know, I'm not a, a Gentile slave, I'm not his wife or child, you know. Even to prepare the basin and water was seen as a very humiliating act, you know. It's seen that, how come must be me? You know, Andrew may ask, how come must be me? Why can't John prepare? You know, then John will say, how come must be me? Why can't Peter prepare? 
And in the end, none of them was prepared to do this, you know, humiliating act of being the one to serve the others. Something else we learned actually uh, about the Last Supper in the other accounts was that actually at this holy uh, feast of the Last Supper, the disciples were actually arguing among themselves as to which of them was the greatest. You know, we know that from uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 24, another account of the Last Supper. So in this context, when the disciples were trying to prove that they were the better ones, the greater ones, okay, of course, it's not surprising uh, none of them wanted to be the one to humiliate himself in front of the others. And so in this situation, when food washing was not done, hospitality was not shown, and no, when no one wanted to act, Jesus decide, decided to do something about it. As the passage tells us, he got up from the meal, he took off his outer clothing, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, after that even drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Basically, what Jesus did here was to take on the attire of a slave. By taking on off his outer clothing and wrapping a towel around his waist, that was the dressing of a slave, a slave who was prepared to serve. Can you imagine how this act would have impacted the 12 disciples that were present? It is a total and unexpected shock to them. Right? Jesus is, is not a, Jew, a, a Gentile slave. Jesus was their Lord and Master, and yet here he was doing the foot washing, the most demeaning of acts. And the shock and awe that, was, that must have been felt by the disciples, I think, is told to us in our passage uh, through the, the reaction of Peter, uh, one of the disciples. So if you look at uh, John 13 carefully, uh, you see that Peter went through uh, several stages uh, of, of reaction. Right? The first reaction that Peter exhibited was to ask Jesus, are you really going to wash my feet? Okay, It was a question of incredulousness, disbelief. You know, is this really happening? Am I dreaming? Are you really, really going to do this unbelievable act? Okay, so that was the first reaction. Reaction. The second reaction after Peter ascertained that Jesus was really going to do it was to say, You shall never wash my feet. Okay. Inability to accept, you know, resistance. Okay. No was his answer. And then finally, when Jesus insisted, Peter said, If you want to wash, please also wash my hands and my head as well. This was Peter's final desperate attempt to try to reduce the humiliation for his master. You know, don't just focus on the feet. You know, please also wash my head, wash my hands, so that the humiliation is less for you. you no, know, don't just look at the feet. You no, know, be, be a master that washes my head as well, right? So Peter tried his best uh, uh, to, to try to reduce the shame for Jesus. This uh, painting that I put up in the slide here uh, is one uh, entitled Jesus Washing Peter's Feet uh, by, a, 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 if I'm not wrong, a, a British or American painter. It's exhibited at the Tate Modern uh, in London. I think this painting is really very revealing. Uh, look at Peter's face. Uh, the, uh, look how grumpy, uncomfortable and unhappy he is. Okay. Look at the faces of the other disciples in this painting. Okay. One of them have, has his head in the hands. Okay. If he's Singaporean, he will say, Alama, what's going on? Okay. Uh, one of them on the right hand side is closing his eyes, almost cannot see uh, what is happening. 
Okay, and in general, the the disciples were in shock, uh, and and disbelief at, at what was going on uh, in in their midst. They were experiencing shock and awe uh, that they had never experienced before. Uh, sometimes we also practice uh, foot washing in our churches, you know, and those of us who have gone through this this ritual uh, understand a little bit of what it, what it feels to have your feet washed, especially by people who are your elders, who are higher than you, uh, so-called, you know, in the hierarchy. It's really a very unpleasant feeling. After looking at how this act was one of shock and awe in the context of the Jewish culture in the first century, we also want to look at how this act is truly shock and awe from the perspective of the God-human relationship. Of course, uh, many of us are familiar. This relationship started when God uh, created human beings, as mentioned in the opening chapters of Genesis, the book of Genesis. And Genesis tells us that God created human beings in his own image. Okay, Amongst all the creatures of the world, only one species have been given this privilege of being in the image of God. And this image is to allow us to have a relationship with God, to have fellowship with God, to be able to communicate with Him and to relate to Him. But we are the privileged species among all the other creatures. But of course, uh, we are familiar with, with what happened next. Instead of being grateful to God for all that He has given us, for creating us, we human beings rebelled against God. We listened uh, to the lies of the devil, of, of the serpent. We believed the serpent when he told us that actually God is not as good as you think He is. Actually, He is a stingy liar who who has withheld the best things from you. He has tricked you, you stupid fools. Okay. And because of that, uh, we basically uh, went to God. We basically spit into his face. We basically told him to leave us alone and that we wanted to go our own way. My friends, every culture in, in this world has some rules about a hierarchy and rights. Okay. So for the Chinese culture, for instance, respect for someone higher in the hierarchy is seen as very important. One of the worst things you can do is to make your elders lose face in front of other people. Okay. So of course, being uh, members of this culture, we train our children, you know, when you have dinner with your extended family, you know, something we have not done for some time. Okay. Of course, the first thing you do is not to go and grab that chicken drumstick and then start eating, you know, immediately. The first thing you're so expected to do is to ask your elders to, to start eating first. There are norms of behavior that are expected, okay. The more junior person is to give way to the more senior person in a narrow passageway. And whenever this hierarchy and sense of right is violated, we get this sense of outrage. How can this thing happen? How can such disrespect be shown to our elders? And in this, in this respect, uh, I think recently we, we read in the news okay, uh, that a Singaporean student was filmed uh, beating up his mother repeatedly in his home. And I think uh, many Singaporeans reacted with great outrage. How can this be? How can such disrespect be shown? It's almost like, you know, uh, a, a young child slapping his grandfather in public because the grandfather refused to give him money to play arcade games or something like that. All these acts fill us with outrage. But actually, they are actually nothing compared to our rebellion against God. The greatest act of disrespect has been shown 
to the highest person in the hierarchy. In fact, God is not even within the hierarchy. He's above our, our earthly hierarchies. Right? He is the God of heaven and earth, and we lowly and unworthy creatures have gone to insult him, to spit at him, to turn away from him. Right? That is how our act must be understood. The greatest act of disrespect causing the greatest loss of faith to our Almighty God. What would God's rightful response be to such an act on our part? I think we must say God's rightful response surely is to say, you want to go your own way? Please carry on. Do what you want and then you suffer the rightful consequences of your act. There will be a rightful response. The rightful response would be to punish us for our, our rebellion, to, 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 to just punish, eliminate, you know, make us suffer. Right? Those will be right responses to what we have done. Right? Just as how we want to punish that student who beat up his mother, we want to punish that grandchild who slapped his grandfather. Punishment would be the right response to our actions. But we learn from the Bible that God's actual response, what he actually did, was the very opposite. Instead of giving us what we truly deserved, instead of sitting there like an offended elder of the family, waiting for us to crawl you know, back to his presence, begging him for forgiveness so that he can kick us away like a dog, what God did was to come amongst us as one of us, to come as a human being, as Jesus Christ, to get up from the meal, to take on the attire of a servant, to kneel before us and to wash our dirty and smelly feet. And this foot washing that Jesus enacted is a symbol of the washing that he would do shortly at the cross when he submitted himself to being killed on the cross so that we and our sins and our guilt and our wrongdoing can all be washed away by his cleansing action by paying the penalty for our sins on the cross for us. My friends, what actually happened was that God didn't sit in heaven sulking, waiting for us to come begging for forgiveness, but God came to those who had offended him, who had shamed him, to wash our feet, to restore us, and to bring us back to him again. And so the message of Christianity is truly one of shock and awe. When we, see, when we see what God has done, our response is one of utter shock. How can you do such a thing? If anyone is to suffer, surely it must be us. If anyone is to die, if anyone is to be punished, surely it must be us. How can it be right to God for God to do all these things? And I think God answers in, in a way, it is not right for me to do all these things. But I do it anyway, because I love you. I do it out of my love for you. And my friends, God's love is something that is so deep, so pure, and so mysterious that I think we will never understand how deep it goes, even in all of eternity. And so in one of the hymns, uh, one of the more modern hymns, there is this uh, stanza that I think is very meaningful. 
restrain to glimpse your mercy seat you know it's like it's like us lowly sinners straining our our necks you know craning our necks trying to stand tiptoe to try to to get a glimpse of god and his his throne in heaven knowing that we are so unworthy and so lowly trying to reach god in heaven you know straining with all our might but suddenly we find god himself kneeling at our feet we strain to glimpse your mercy seat O lord but then we find you kneeling at our feet and that is the message of shock and awe for us today my friends my brothers and sisters how do we respond to this message of shock and awe that we hear today from John chapter 13. I think one response which God calls us to make is for us to return to the God who has created us and who loves us with such an unfailing love. Maybe there are some of us here today who do not yet know this God that we are talking about. Maybe there are some of us here today who have left this God, you know, who, who have walked away from this God, who have in a way rejected this God in the past. And sometimes we think, I have done so many things that are so sinful, so displeasing to God. I've lived a life that is quite crazy. I don't think God can accept me back again. My friends, if those are your thoughts, can I invite you once again to focus on our passage from John 13, where Jesus, the Lord of heaven and earth, wrapped a tower around his waist and knelt down at the feet of his proud and stubborn and arrogant disciples and wash their feet. God does not need you know, us to get our lives back in order, you know, to make, make ourselves right before we approach Him. But God is the one who takes the initiative to come to us, to reach out to us, to, to cleanse us because He wants to be with us and he wants us to be with him. My friends, if today you are far away from God, may I invite you to return to him. There is no need for you to get things right before you do. God is not one who says, come back and let me punish you. God is the one who comes on his own initiative and washes us even before we are able to respond to him. The second response that I think we need to make in the light of God's word to us today is that we need to wash one another's feet. Jesus said in our passage today, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I've done for you. My brothers and sisters, we are not allowed to watch Jesus' act from a distance, you know, and then say, wow, well done, Jesus. Good. Uh, what a good example. What a good act you have done. We are not allowed to do that. Because after doing his act, Jesus says these words. Now that I have done this act, you also should wash one another's feet. This act has implications for us in that we are called to follow the example of Jesus. And so, my brothers and sisters, 
Can I ask you this question? If the gospel is truly a story of shock and awe, if the act of Jesus in washing his disciples' feet was truly shock, no, shocking and, 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 and awesome in the first century culture, Jewish culture, if it was truly shocking and awesome from the perspective of how we treated God, you know, in, in rebelling against him. And if we are called to follow Jesus' example, then what is one act of shock and awe that we can do in the coming weeks? How can we shock the people around us with the shock of the gospel in the coming weeks? Will there be opportunities for us to do acts of shock and awe, for instance, uh, in our offices? Okay. In the office, it is a place of very strong hierarchy, you know. There are people at the top, you must respect them, give them faith, you know. Then there are people at the bottom, the nobodies that maybe we don't even pay attention to. Okay, the cleaners, the security personnel, the, the delivery, uh, food delivery people that we hardly even, you know, put cast an eye on. Is there an opportunity for us to do acts of shock and awe today? Something that really offends the hierarchy, you know, something that really is unexpected from the perspective of our rights and our hierarchy. Should we start to talk to those people that we have never noticed? Should we even ask them out for a meal? Is there something shocking that we can do in the coming weeks? Or is there something shocking that we can do in terms of forgiving another person, of reconciling with someone, someone who has maybe offended you, someone who has you don't get along well with, someone who you know you, you are angry with and you have the right to be angry with. Is there an act of shock and awe that we can do in going to this person, this colleague, this relative and say, you know, I forgive you because God has forgiven me and I want you know to 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 be reconciled with you is there an act of shock and awe that we can do in the coming week similar to what Jesus has done for us and finally my brothers and sisters is there an act of shock and awe that we can do in terms of taking this leap of faith that maybe God has placed on our hearts for some time. Maybe God has, you know, prompted some of us to do something that, you know, would be considered really crazy, you know. Maybe we have been prompted to help this person in a way that would be very costly for us, you know, to give this large sum of money to this organization in need. Maybe for some of us, even the prompting to leave our jobs and enter into full-time Christian ministry, something that is so shocking to us. Is it time actually for us to respond? Because after all, what God has done for us is far more shocking and awesome. My friends, if you are far away from God today, may I invite you to return to Him because he is the God who has come to wash our feet. And if you are in the community of faith, will you also go and shock others by washing their feet in the coming weeks? Let us close in prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, you have come to wash our dirty and smelly and lowly feet. You have knelt before us and you have served us. Although we are the ones who have offended you, we have shamed you, we have insulted you, we have really made you lose face. 
Lord, help us to be able to receive this love today and to show it the same shocking love to the others around us. Please help us, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask all this in the name of the God who washes our feet, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Liao, for bringing God's word to us today. Church, I want to invite you to take a few moments to quieten your hearts and to respond to God's word. Will you allow him to speak to you today? Let's be silent for a few moments to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Church, as we hear God, as we have heard God's word today, are there some of us who need to return to God? Some of us, while we may even be here attending service, but our hearts are far away. And you know where you have been. Today, I believe the word of God has come forth to speak to us, where God is inviting us once again to return to him. And despite all that we have done, how we have spit at him and how we have, through our rebellion, rejected him. God not only invites us, but he comes and he washes our feet as a sign of his love, his acceptance and his cleansing. So friends, today, if you feel that you are far away, we need, we want to invite you to return to God. And for the others, Maybe God is already speaking to you about how you can show shock and awe to someone else in your office, in your schools, your families, your neighborhood. We are in this season of being released by God. Released not just to ministry, but released to the marketplace. Is there somewhere, someone that God can use you to speak to? to be a blessing and to be a recipient of God's love. May God use us all to bless others, to forgive someone. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Dr. Liao. And uh, I pass the time back to Chairperson. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Liao. Okay, uh, we have kind of come to the end of our service. But before we go, we just want to remind all again that uh, there are self-care groups that you can join, all right, to share your life with. So contact the following people that if you are interested to join in any one of the cell group. And uh, second, Moving on, okay, I think we don't want to, we don't have to dwell on this too much. We've been talking about it week in, week out. All right, so if you're not connected to us uh, on social media, please uh, do so. And uh, okay, we have uh, come to the end of the service. And uh, once again, we thank you for joining us. But before we dismiss all of us, okay, we have one uh, thing that we want to do, okay. We have uh, one uh, member of ours who has a birthday on this actual day. We want to sing a birthday song for her. We want the whole church to sing a birthday song for her. And guess who? All right, Mrs. Go. Okay, you can see in Jane's screen, they are actually at Mrs. Go's place right now. 
So let's uh, unmute uh let's unmute uh Dennis either Dennis or Jane's phone. Okay. Let's hear. Yeah. Mrs. Go, happy birthday. Mrs. Go, your hua come on jang ma. Ah, very charming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay. Okay, now let's all unmute ourselves. Okay, what? Oh, hang on, hang on. We are uh, going we... to take the lighter. Wow. So the cake, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's unmute ourselves, okay? And we just blast, okay, above this song all together. Maybe put here. Yeah. Wow. You see, you have uh, different angles of view, huh? <laughs> Fantastic, huh? All right. Once you are ready, please. Tell us, where's the cake? Cannot see the cake, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah. 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 Okay, okay, we see. Yeah. Uh, we are looking for lighter. Stove, lah. Induction cooker, no, no yeah, fire. Yeah, stove. Where the sound comes from? Oh, Mr. Ghost, I think. Is it Mr. Go or Mr. Ghost? Okay, can we Hello. She's looking for. <laughs> okay, okay. While waiting, can you please bring us for a home tour? Come, come, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Did not find two rocks, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we know what to buy Mrs. Go for a birthday present. A lighter. <laughs> oh, I see three angle, no three angle of view. Can you all see? One from the bottom. <laughs> okay. You see the fire. All right. Are we ready? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, uh, so if you can, unmute yourself. Let's all Yay. put our voices together and sing a happy birthday song. Okay, ready? One, One two, two, three. Happy birthday, birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Hi, Mr. Go, train or take? Hey, mate, that's good. God bless you. Oh, uh, Mrs. Go, train or take? Oh, you get the flow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Let's invite, our, let's invite our lay leader to say a prayer for Mrs. Go, shall, shall we? Okay, let's pray, let's pray. Okay, Father Lord, we thank you for... Uh, 
always been protecting and being with uh, the goal. We ask that you continue to uh, review yourself to her, bless her, protect her. Your mercy will be upon her. That everywhere she go, Lord, she will be protected by you. And Lord, everywhere she goes, she will be the salt and the light among people she meets. Father, as you place people on the path, she will continue to bless them. We pray that Lord, the children, Lord, they will continue to grow to be more like you through her influence and through her uh, meeting with them. We pray for a blessing upon this family and uh, you continue to strengthen uh, Mrs. Scope. We commit her into your hand in Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. We have come to the end of the service. So, we you are free to be dismissed. For those who want to hang around and interact with one another, we we'll keep this platform open for a couple of minutes so that you can uh, freely interact with the people that you have missed talking to. Uh. Okay. All right. Bye. See you next week. Yeah. Okay.